Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I was walking by this tree the other day. I was helping my son do his paper route. And it's a tulip tree, which is native to North America. And I noticed something a little different on the tree today. At first I thought there were yellow leaves up in the canopy. But as I was walking by, I took a closer look and they're flowers. So let me show you the flowers on the tulip tree. Here's a close up of the flower. And they're quite beautiful for a flower on a tree. They're quite amazing. They call it the tulip tree also because the leaves, let me find a good leaf, also has a tulip shape to it. The tree is just covered in flowers. I don't know if you can see them too easily, but it is. And uh, they're just amazing. There is another one I'm going to try and visit, and we'll see if that one has flowers on it too. These trees are native to North America. There's a Chinese version of it too. And they're a fast growing tree, but unlike most fast growing trees, these tulip trees are long lived and the wood on them is really hard. So they're resistant to weather and uh, age. I biked out here to the cemetery and I looked around and I finally found the tulip tree. It's over here. I can see some flowers on it up high. And the reason I remember this tulip tree is that it has branches down low. And I thought, if it ever gets seeds, I could always pick the seeds and uh, try growing one as a bonsai. So I'm gonna look around. I uh, hope there's a flower down low that we can look at. There's plenty high up in the canopy. I see one right here. Not quite as showy as some of the other ones, but we'll continue looking. Maybe over here on the sunny side of the tree. There's one in here. Now this one is quite pale in color. Let me see if they smell at all. I, I don't smell anything on them. They sure are beautiful though. There's one up here that's faded away. You can see it up here. I'm just gonna see if these are seeds at all. I, I don't think those are seeds. I think they're just dried up something. <laughs> now here, this is either a flower, I think this is, yeah, that's a spent flower. So you can see the, uh, the pot on it. So I imagine the seed will develop in there or many seeds. There's a flower that's just about, just about dying away. Let's see if we can find any other good ones. There's one up here, that one's almost faded away too. There's lots of seed pods on the tree. So I'm definitely going to have to come back later on. Oh, there's some beautiful flowers up there. Looks like all the good flowers are up high, <laughs> of course. There's another tree over here. I didn't realize there was two of them. It's also got flowers on it. There's some seed pods right there yeah so a really cool shaped leaf you can see it looks like a the shape of a tulip not only do they have tulip leaves but they have tulip like flowers oh here's some good flowers so here there's a flower there's a better one up here here's a nice orange one look at that Yeah, it's just beautiful. I like that. Let me see if it smells. No, I don't smell anything. There's a flower. This looks like a younger flower that's just coming out. Here, I think these are flowers probably from last year. So 
that's the coating around the seed pod so obviously that's opened up when it dried out and whatever seeds were in there have fallen down to the ground down there and I don't see any little trees growing up unfortunately but yeah this is a fairly big tree yeah it just looks like it was covered in flowers earlier maybe I'm at the uh, you know the tail end of the flowering period for this tree I looked online it said they flower in the United States kind of late uh, was it May late May I think I guess it depends on your region there's another nice flower up there yeah so this one's got a fairly gray trunk it must be more mature you can see the there's a dead branch there you can see the pattern of the bark it's uh How would I describe that? Uh, almost like alligator skin. It'd be how I would describe it. You can see it here. Kind of has like that. Reptile kind of look to it. I don't know what that sound was. Really cool tree. I'm going to look around and see if there's any others. There's a nice large leaf linden here. It's not a very big tree, but uh, I'm just checking out to see if it has flowers on it. No, I don't see any. You can see the large leaf version gets quite large leaves compared to the small leaf version that I have. Really nice striped bark. I don't know if I can show you that. Um, look in there. Can you see that? Yeah, really nice striped bark on them. There's a sweet chestnut tree here. Or an American buckeye, I think they call them. You can see the spiky seed pods developing and the remains of the flower there. Well, this video is sort of turning into a crime pays but botany doesn't video. I'm just out here looking at trees and flowers and things. There's an interesting maple here. I'm just trying to see what kind it is. It looks like a field maple definitely a field maple there's the keys at least I believe and let's have a look at the trunk on it because this is a fairly big one there's the trunk you can see the junction up here it was probably pruned as a very short tree at one time and then it's grown quite a tree quite a specimen beautiful small leaves on it they make great bonsai, these field maples. So do Ammer maples. Way in the distance over there, there is a tree in flower. And I think the only trees in flower at this time of year are catalpa trees. So let's go have a look at it. This is quite a nice area of interesting trees. There's a native white pine there with the soft needles, beautiful trees, lots of spruces. Over here is a Don Redwood. And a lot of people were saying the tree I have is a bald cypress, not a dawn redwood. And they said because on the dawn redwood, the leaves are opposite each other like this. They're not staggered. So this would indicate to me that this is a dawn redwood. So yeah, so I guess this definitely looks like a dawn redwood, I believe. I'll check the one at home, uh, see if it's leaves are opposite or if they're staggered and maybe it is a bald cypress I don't know whatever it is it survived the Canadian winter I did bring it into the basement for the coldest months but it did get a good cold winter here's the tulip tree what we looked at and there's another one over here and there's another 
This is an Austrian pine here. You can see how long the needles are on a tree in nature, and I've seen them even bigger than this. This has kind of got small needles because it's in the shade. But yeah, an Austrian pine there. Tulip trees here. Oh, there's another tulip tree over here. So there's at least three of them in here. Wow. Okay, let's go look at those flowers now, those white flowers, and see what kind of tree that was. I haven't made it over to the flowering tree yet. I had to stop and look at this Dawn Redwood. It's just amazing. The tree isn't very high. You can see it's kind of, I don't know where the top is, about here. It's a little higher than me, but not a whole lot. But look at the trunk on it. Oh my goodness. It is just a sight to behold. It's like a hidden treasure in here. Look at that. So I'm pointing the camera at eye level now, so you can see the top of the trees just up here. For some reason, it decided to grow sideways <laughs> and out instead of growing tall and vertical. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful shade tree. Very short with a, just an awesome trunk on it. I don't know if I can get all the way around the trunk. And I love how the, the live veins grow up from the roots and they grow around the branches. It's really cool. You can see how they flow around the branches, almost like, you know, melting wax on a candle. It just flows down around everything. It's a really, really neat look. And I hope on my bonsai version, if I do have a Dawn Redwood, if it's not a bald cypress, um, I'm hoping that I can kind of get this look in a bonsai tree, and I think I can. With age, they seem to uh, develop this kind of thing, and with proper root pruning and, you know, clip and grow, I think I can get a bonsai version of the tree that has kind of these features on the trunk and branches. Yeah, so that is awesome. So let's go uh, head out and try and find that flowering tree now. Got a little distracted here. Well, again, I didn't make it to the flowering tree. I stopped to look at this paperbark birch. And it's funny because there's not many trees in the world that have white bark like this that peels off like paper. I'll show you that. So here we are. So you can see the bark, how it's just kind of peeling off and you can peel it off in strips like that. That's why they call it the paper bark birch. And it does that all through the life. So the bark starts to get kind of gray and algae on it. And then as the tree grows, it sheds its bark and you get this fresh bark underneath, which is pretty cool. And you would think they do make fairly good bonsai trees. The only trouble with them is that they're not really a long lived tree. They're sort of a pioneer tree, so they uh, they grow in places where a lot of trees just wouldn't grow, and they're not very strong. So they, you know, they they can they can live. When I say they're not a long-lived tree, they'll live way longer than I ever will. I mean, they'll live a hundred years easily. But uh, you don't see a lot of bonsai versions of the paper bark birches because. They're just a common tree around here, and we, I guess, take them for granted. I know everyone online says, oh, paper bark birches, they're so cool. And uh, they are, I've started some this year, so I've got some on the go as bonsai, so we'll see how they develop. But uh, they love water. And again, you know, they're kind of prone to die back in the branches. They're not what you would call a reliable tree as a bonsai. It's one of those trees where they say don't fall in love with the branch structure because next year it might all be different. All your favorite branches will die off and it'll sprout new ones. So, you know, they're not ideal for bonsai. They're not like pines, which are very stable, the branching, and they very rarely die back in that. So they're a, you know, more of a freeform tree. You go with the flow of them, but beautiful, I mean, what other trees have that, you know, paper 
white paper bark to them. There might be a few in Australia, some of the gum trees, but uh, yeah. Speaking of cool trees, check out this spruce here. This is awesome. Now I've talked about spruces in a previous video and I talked about the branches that some spruces like this one, the clean line of the branches on top and then all the foliage hangs down. So you can see it on this branch here. You know, there's nothing. This is the major part of the branch here. Waving in the wind at me. And all the foliage and branches hang down off of it. And it, it's a really cool look. If you look at the tree, it's, uh, I don't know, it always reminds me of the robes on a judge or something, or maybe an angel or something, the wings on an angel. Yeah, I think that's a better description. And a really cool tree, and this is a big one. I just love it. And I don't know, I should be out here collecting cones off these trees and growing them as bonsai because there's so many cool species of spruce. The one beside us here is different. This one has the foliage more on top of the branch and it's a bluer color. So that's probably a blue spruce. I don't think it's a fir, but it could be a fir tree too. There's so many uh, species of fruit, spruce and firs that it's hard to tell them all apart. And then there's probably hybrid versions of them. Now I can see some cones way up top on this one. Yeah, there's cones up there all right. And I'm trying to see if there's any on this beautiful tree here. I hope there is because this is spectacular. And I really want to get one of these trees going as a bonsai. It's so cool. I don't see any cones on it though. I don't see any cones forming. I'm going to try and get in and look at the trunk on this tree. Look how they weep down right to the ground here. It is so cool, this tree. There's one view of the trunk, but I think from around here I'll get a better view, I hope. Yeah. Let's go in. There's the trunk. So, you know, pretty regular spruce type bark. Actually, this is fairly smooth. It's only going rough at the bottom, so it stayed a very smooth trunk tree all its life. It must only be on the very old ones that it uh, starts to crackle. Looking up at it here, it almost looks like a willow tree to me, the way everything's hanging down at me. Yeah, that is a cool tree. Okay, this is on my wish list to get one of these going as a bonsai. Just fantastic. Just beside that spruce, there's a pyramidal oak. You can see the leaves here. They're about the size of like a, uh, a regular oak or a English oak, but it has a pyramidal habit. And here's the trunk, so it's not that big a trunk. I don't know if you can see my hand in there. They're not that big. But this one is a big tree. Um, if we look up here, you don't often see the pyramidal oaks this large. This is getting really, really tall compared to the ground there. So yeah, that's pretty cool too. There's some cool trees in this uh, section of the forest. Here's a London plane tree. These are the ones that have like, the bark looks like camouflage on them. It peels off. It kind of gets rough like this. And then it peels off in plates and it's got this kind of mottled green color beneath it. Um, yeah, there it is. So the new parts of it are a light green and then it goes to a darker green, grayish green. And you can see up top, because the branches are blowing in the wind, all the bark peels off them and they're very smooth up top. You only get this kind of rough bark down low at the base of the tree where it's not swaying in the wind and flexing and causing the bark to flake off. So that's a really cool tree. I've tried several times to get one started as a bonsai. They have really large leaves. They're totally not suitable 
for bonsai, but I still try and get one because I just think they're a they're a cool tree. Right behind that plane tree, there's a horse chestnut tree. Just a young one. That looks pretty cool. I've tried several times to grow a horse chestnut as a bonsai and I've given up and the reason is that I get boring insects attacking them. Every time I just start to get it, you know, mature at 10, 15 years old, I come out and there's holes bored in the trunk, sawdust coming out of the holes and then the tree dies the next couple of days and it's just, I, I've tried so many times with horse chestnuts and they all end up with the same fate. They all get attacked by a native boring beetle. Here is another tulip tree. Wow. And I'm not seeing any flowers on this one. It's got a lot of low branches here. I'm not seeing any flower pods. Or uh, seed pods, I mean. No, it's just... No flowers in this one. I'm not sure if there's a male or female. I'm not really sure. Very, look at the bark on it. It's very serrated. It's like it was smooth and then it just split open everywhere. Really cool. That's a pretty big tree. Wow. You see those tulip shaped leaves really easily there. Backlit by the sun. Oh, there's one flower over here. Look at that. Right in the sun here for me. Okay, that's good. It seems like every tulip tree I've seen has flowers on it so far. Oh, and what do we have over here? Here's another Dawn Redwood. This one's a lot bigger goes right up to the sun there. Let's go in and look at the trunk on this one. Just love these trunks. A lot of weeds in the way, but wow, that is, that is cool. It has a lot of low spreading branches and a very thick trunk. Let me get out and have a look at it from this view. Oh yeah, look at that. And again, those veins, those living veins flowing around the branches. Really cool. Really nice color on the trunk. Beautiful leaves, soft leaves that, you know, they get nice fall colors and they lose their leaves in fall. Really beautiful tree. Wow, I don't know if I can get it all in. There's a big European horse chestnut here, and it's getting its seed pods on it, or its nuts, or spiky balls. So that was the remains of a flower, and it's turning to seed. Really cool. And they always get these little rusty spots on them. I just seems to be, I don't know, every one I see always has some rust spots on the leaves. Just the way they are, I guess. So another nice spruce here. Really cool. Any of these trees that we looked at today can be grown as bonsai. It just depends on if you want your bonsai to look like traditional bonsai with little tiny leaves and fine branching, or if you want them to look more like a miniature version of the full-size trees you would see in nature. I've been wandering around so much today I don't even know where that uh, tree with the white flowers is anymore. I think it was somewhere in that direction, but I don't know. I think we'll have to give it up. I think uh, that'll be it for today. I think uh, I'll just make this video a walk outside looking at trees, which is one of my favorite things to do. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.
You guys didn't think I was going to leave you without seeing the catalpa in flower, so here it is. I just remembered something. The trees, the orchard trees, have come back to the community gardens, so I'm going to go have a look at them now. I am out at the community gardens. It is a beautiful day today. So the new trees did arrive and they've put them in the shade over here. The only problem is, is the trunks don't have the spiral wraps on them. So in this forest here, which is alongside this property, it's full of rabbits and in the evening they all come out and I think if I don't move these trees all these trunks will be uh, nibbled through and the trees will be dead by morning so I'm going to move the trees and I'm going to put them in the fenced in area and there's still rabbits that get into these gardens they dig under and squeeze underneath the fence so I'm going to put them on top of the picnic tables here you can see I've already got two up there and that way the rabbits won't be able to reach them until we get some spiral wraps around the trunks. And then we can move them probably to a sunnier spot. I'm also going to have to water them. They look like they need watering too. So, time to get to work. My wife and I moved all the trees by the edge of the forest onto the tabletops here. So we've got double protection. We've got that wire fence and hopefully they won't jump up on the benches and then chew the trunks here. I think they're pretty safe. So there's lots of variety here. Everything from mulberries to pears, apples, everything. And they all look really healthy. This is from Silver Creek Nurseries. So my next job is I'm going to make sure all the trees are watered thoroughly. They look a little dry. So I'll do that next. Give them all a good drink. Grow little trees, grow. Better stand back in case they shoot up. <laughs> oh, it's looking good. So there we are, the new trees are all watered. Looking good, they look really healthy. So they'll be going out in the spiral orchard. I'm not sure when we'll plant them, probably closer to fall, I would think. Beside the community garden, there's the new shared garden, which is more of rows of kind of corn and peppers and kind of growing food. So almost like a mini farm. So beside it over here will be the First Nations garden. You can see the cedars out there, maybe <laughs> they're pretty small. So here's the rows of corn here. Yeah, so that's looking really nice. Just amazing. I'm going to walk around and do a quick check of all the trees that we planted last year. Just check to see how they're doing. So most of the cedars survived. I do see one dead one. And there's one way out there that's not looking the greatest. But all the rest look green and healthy. Doing okay. Here's another one that looks like it got stripped of its leaves. Yeah, it definitely did. Whatever did it. Oh, there's a caterpillar. See it right there? Right there, that's the culprit. So. Ah. 
I'm gonna have to pick it off. I don't want to touch it with my hand because sometimes you get a reaction to these kind of tent caterpillars. Off you go, dude. Come on, off you go. He's on the ground there. Hopefully he won't find the tree again. Another one. This one looks like it's had its leaves stripped too. I don't see any caterpillars left on it, but they've done their work. Yeah, everything's looking all right out here. There's our row of fruit trees down there. All the peach trees down here look like they're doing really well. Look at that one, beautiful. The trees alongside the garden here are also doing well. The pears and the apples, good to see. This is where the spiral orchard will go. All those new trees will be planted in this area here. So very exciting. And this really is the end of the video now. See everyone later.